they great? <laughs> they are. You guys have been simply awesome. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. You know, I got to tell you, uh, this show has been the most fun thing I have ever done in show business. And uh, when we first started doing this, the, the first night we had no idea of how to close it. And I will tell you this, when you're a comedian, the, the greatest thrill in the world is, is making people laugh. But it gets your adrenaline going so much, there's no way you can possibly go to sleep at the end of the night. And so we've all been friends for about 15 years. And so we have spent so many nights at the Waffle House at 2 o'clock in the morning just <laughs> sitting around and telling stories. And so we decided, you know what, that's the way we, we're going to close this thing every night, is to just come out and tell stories that, that has made each of us laugh through the years. And i got to tell you something. And everybody's got great stories, but... <laughs> Yin Yang here. <laughs> you got to tell the story about when you took your sister to the flea market because she was all bummed out. Remember that? Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she made Ray Charles flinch. <laughs> well, my sister. My sister is uh, covered with mold. All right, she's got mold all over her face there. A bunch of mold. And we used to call her Old Moly. But uh, she went down there to church and got saved. Now we call her Holy Moly. And uh, it ain't funny, to be honest with you. And, uh, but she's feeling bad about her mold, so we figured we'd lift her spirits, took her up to the flea market up there, get her something nice, and, and uh, we's up there. She's already feeling bad about her moles, and then the night before, she got this horse, and it busted his leg, and I had to shoot it, and uh, now it's got a broken leg and a gunshot wound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to shoot it for, but and, uh, I, um, I guess it helps in the healing process or something. I ain't sure. If it ain't buried by next week, I'm going to shoot it again. I'll tell you that. Man. But uh, we was up there at the flea market, and we thought my grandma couldn't make it up there. She got arrested at Bass Pro Shops. <laughs> yeah, she was eating a corn dog and got the farts in there. And they accused her of stealing a duck call and some stink bait at the Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. She didn't even have any pockets on that nightgown she was wearing in there. <laughs> so we's up at the flea market. And my sister's feeling bad about her mold. And she's complaining all day long about her moles. My moles this, my moles that, my mole, my mole. So we walk past this fella up there at flea market. Got no legs. All right? Selling boots. <laughs> and, uh, that's right. Got no legs, half an arm, you know, one ear. Name was Lucky. So uh, I told my sister, I said, listen, D. Wayne, I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed. Because here's a fella, got no legs, selling boots, whistling, enjoying himself, and you is complaining about a few moles. You ought to be thankful for everything the Lord give you. And she said, you know what? You're right, I ought to be thankful for what the Lord gave me. She started to get a little extra hitch in her giddy up, you know, started smiling a little more. And as soon as we passed that fella there with no legs, I heard him say to his buddy, Good Lord, did you see the moles on that girl's face right there? <laughs> That's right. True story. Well, Larry, thank you so much for sharing that with everybody. Makes you feel better about your family, don't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. It's kind of like going to the state fair every time. You feel better about your own relatives. Uh, it's Ron's turn. I'm going to let you guys pick tonight. He can either tell 
Either tell the story about, remember when they put the Bengay in his grandmother's girdle? <laughs> or uh, the time he got thrown out of the bar in New York City? Oh, yeah. They got to go to the bar. New York. All right, New York. Uh, I got thrown out of a bar in New York City. Now, when I say I got thrown out of a bar, I don't mean somebody asked me to leave and we walked to the door together and I said, bye, everybody, I gotta go. Six bouncers hurled me out of a nightclub like I was a Frisbee. Those big old New York bouncers that think bouncing's a cool job to have, they, they just think about bouncing. They hang out with other bouncers talking about bouncing. They go home every night, watch Roadhouse, and fondle themselves. <laughs> For wearing a hat. I walk into a bar with a hat on. This guy, real pissy, goes, Tuck off the hat! <laughs> and I'm like, what's the deal? He goes, I'll tell you what the deal is. Gay people in this area wear hats. We're trying to keep them out of our club. I'm like, oh, really? The only way we can tell down in Texas is if they have their hair cut like yours. <laughs> And he got all pissed. But he walked away, and I took the hat off, and like an hour later, I'd been drinking, and I forgot. You ever forget? It happened to me. <laughs> I put the hat back on. The guy comes over to me. Now, I'm between 6'1 and 6'6, depending on which convenience store I'm leaving. I weigh 230 pounds. A guy comes over to me poking me in the shoulder with two fingers and says, you're out of here. I was like, I don't think so, Scooter. <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> they hurled me out of that bar. And then they squared off with me in the parking lot and I backed down from the fight because I don't know how many of them it would have taken to whip my ass. <laughs> but I knew how many they were going to use. <laughs> That's a handy little piece of information to have right there. Well, they called the police because we broke a chair on the way out the door and I refused to pay for it. I refused to pay for it because we broke it over my thigh. <laughs> the cops showed up and at that point, I had the right to remain silent, <laughs> but I didn't have the ability. Cop says, Mr. White, you are being charged with drunk in public. I was like, hi, 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 hi. I was drunk in a bar. <laughs> they threw me into public. <laughs> I don't want to be drunk in public. I want to be drunk in a bar, which is perfectly legal. Arrest them. <laughs> Well, he didn't arrest them. Instead, he made me do a field sobriety test where you stand on one foot, raise the other foot six inches off the ground, and count to 30. I made it to woo. <laughs> Is that going to be close enough? <laughs> well, it wasn't close enough, so they call in for my arrest record. There's some good news. <laughs> Satellites are linking up in outer space. Computer banks at NASA are kicking on. There's a telegraph in Fritch, Texas going, beep, 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 Shorthand. <laughs> now, I told you that story to tell you this story. When I was 17 years old, I was arrested for being drunk in public. There kind of seems to be a pattern there, Ron. If you knew Morse code, you'd already know that.
And one DWI, which was a bogus charge because it turns out they were stopping every vehicle traveling down that particular sidewalk. <laughs> and that's profiling. <laughs> and profiling is wrong. <laughs> On the drunken public charge in French, Texas, the arresting officer, who I had literally known all my life, you know what I mean? This guy lived four doors down from me in a town of less than 400 people. We've met. <laughs> he takes me to jail. When we get there, he asks me if I have any aliases. <laughs> and I was just being a smart ass and said, yeah, they call me Tater Salad. <laughs> 17 years later in New York City, I'm handcuffed on a bench with blood coming out of my nose, and this cop goes, are you Ron Tater Salad? What? <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> you caught the tater. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You guys like it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, it is your turn, and you don't get a choice. You you have got to do some here's your sign. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I had the great opportunity this year to take my family to the Winter Olympics, and uh, it was great being an American, being in our home country and all that. And uh, we were renting a car up in Salt Lake City, and uh, it's got a ski rack on it, and we was putting the skis up in the ski rack. And the guy at the car right next to me goes, you going skiing? I said, nope, we put him on top of the car in case we flip over on the icy road. <laughs> Here's your sign. <laughs> this last year I had a chance to go elk hunting. I got me a nice one, had it hung on the den uh, wall there in my house. And my neighbor comes over and he goes, you shoot that thing? <laughs> I said, nope, he ran through the wall and got stuck. <laughs> Here's your sign. Hey, Bill, uh, tell them about the one in uh, Buffalo when we did the show in Buffalo. Remember when they lost it? Oh, God. We, we did this show up in Buffalo, New York, and uh, we, we land at the airport. We all go down to get our luggage, and mine didn't show up, which I know happens. So I go down to the lost luggage office where everybody's in such a good mood. <laughs> Who applies for that job? Who says, I want to work in lost luggage? You don't have a good day. That's like having a job empty in porta potties. You're just going to catch crap all day long. That is beautiful. Did you just you. make that up? Yeah. I like to use analogies in my show. That's where they compare things. Funny. I don't care who you are right there now. That's funny right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm trying to be nice to this woman in the lost luggage office. And I said, excuse me. And she goes, can I help you? I said, yes, ma'am. You lost my luggage. She looked me right in the eye and said, has your plane landed yet? <laughs> Where? I said, no, Princess, I'm having an out-of-body experience. I'm just checking on it. Here's your sign. I hate to stop you, but I, I've got one for you. And I know, I know you have so many of these oh, no, things. Really here, this one. But this, this happened to me last week. We're, we're in the process of, of remodeling our house. We've been doing it for a while. And uh, we have the painters in there right now. You know, the, right. And they're putting the sheets over the furniture. And we have a piano, just a regular up-against-the-wall piano. Last week, one of the painters says to me, Is that y'all's piano? <laughs> no, that's our coffee table. It just has buck teeth. <laughs> Here's your sign. He did not, yes, did he? he did. Oh, okay. well, I'll keep that one. I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> hey, let me try one of these Bill Engvall, here's your sign, Dave. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to start <laughs> this. No. no, you knew this. <laughs> your next album will go aluminum.
my grandma is covered with mold. <laughs> no. My grandma recently just passed away. 104 years old. That's right. But they saved the baby. I don't think he's kidding. Now, my grandma just passed away 104 years old. So I go up there to the flower feller to, you know, get her flowers uh, and a card up there at the flower feller. And wait, and I was walking wait, in no, there. wait, wait. Oh, you bought a card for your dead grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> they had them there. I know I'm going to regret this. What did it say? <laughs> Get well soon. I knew it was coming. I knew it. It's a little late. <laughs> but anyway, 104 years old. Pass away. I go up there at the flower feller. Said, he said, what is this for? I said, my grandma passed away 104. He said, oh, 104. How'd she die? <laughs> How'd she die? She's 104. <laughs> she wrecked her Harley up there at Bike Week. <laughs> Here's your sign. It was better than I thought it was going to be. Hey, Bill. Bill, uh, uh, I got one. Oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, my son, Tater Tot. <laughs> Is covered with mold. <laughs> yeah, my son, when he was six years old, was going to fly by himself from Dallas to Austin to spend a week with his grandmother. I'm putting him on the plane. His grandmother's taking him off the plane. And the lady I was buying the ticket from says, is there going to be somebody there in Austin to pick him up when he gets off the plane? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm going to pin a $20 bill to his collar and wish him the best of luck. <laughs> Here's your sign. Bill, what do you say you try one? Yeah, let me give it a shot. <laughs> the other, a uh, couple weeks ago, a car broke down. I was on the side of the road, had the hood up, and there's smoke just pouring out of the motor. This guy stops to see if I'm all right, but he asked the stupid question. He goes, your car break down? <laughs> nope, car wanted cigarettes. I pulled over. Here's your time. I was in the store the other day. I'm buying some pants. And I put the pants up on the counter, and the little girl behind the counter goes, you going to buy those? I said, nope, going to steal them. Just wanted you to see them before I walked out of the store. Hey, hey tell them about the one that you done did over at, what you call her? Maybe that yeah, one. Bill, tell us about the one you done did over at that deal there, Bill. He just ended a sentence in nine prepositions. He's an overachiever. Well, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> I know the one you're talking about. All right. I came out of the mall one day. The guy parked right next to me, standing there with a coat hanger in his window, and I could not stop myself. I said, you lock your keys in your car? Oh! He whooped around and said, nope, just washed it. You're going to hang it up to dry. Here's your time. But the best one, the best one I've seen yet happened in Los Angeles, California. I got stuck behind a big rig that had wedged his trailer up underneath an overpass. And me and the truckers were waiting on the side of the road on the tow truck driver. Well, the highway patrolman pulls up and looks at the guy's rig, and he looks at the trucker, and I'm thinking, oh, dear God, he can't say it. Because I'll start laughing. <laughs> sure enough, he goes, you get your truck stuck? <laughs> And God bless this truck without missing a beat. He goes, nope, I was delivering that overpass. I ran out of gas. Here's your time. Thank you. Well, folks, I know this, I can speak for the rest of these guys. This has been one of the most awesome nights of my life and everybody up here. And I know it's been good for y'all. But I know 
You are not going to leave this room until you hear some You Might Be a Redneck. If you think in sync is where your dirty dishes are, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you take your dog for a walk and you both use the tree at the corner, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think a 401k is your mother-in-law's bra size, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your dad's cell number has nothing to do with a telephone, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you keep a flash water on the front seat of the car so you can reach your kids in the back seat of the car. <laughs> They're like, can you do that? Is that okay? No, don't, don't do that. If your working television sits on top of your non-working television, <laughs> You might be a redneck. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you work without a shirt on and so does your husband, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger changed your life, you might be a redneck. If you've ever worn a tube top to a funeral home, you might be a redneck. Oh, my God. Wait. I can't even believe you just said that. Why, did you see that? No. I got one better. If you've ever opened a beer during a eulogy, you might be a redneck. <laughs> I'm just guessing one of your relatives. My Uncle Jack. <laughs> we, I swear to you, Jeff, we were sitting. We weren't even outside. We were in the church. And the reverend had just finished the eulogy, and we heard. <laughs> <laughs> and we look in the back, and he's sitting there with a beer, and he goes, what? Mama looks good, don't she? <laughs> that ain't mama. <laughs> now that's her. They just shaved her beard off. <laughs> Got my beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, as long as you're telling ones on your relatives, I'm telling one on you. Th this is one he, he did, and it, it's about 12 years ago in Iowa. I want you to think back. A couple of oh, DJs no, told me about no, this. No. If you have ever ridden an electric floor buffer, you. All right, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Tequila was involved. Get off me. Wonder how many times his wife has said that. <laughs> <laughs> One more on you. If you ever empty the bed of your pickup truck by driving backwards really fast and slamming on the brakes. That's how we move. You might be a redneck. If you've ever used a bar stool for a walker, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think silence of the lambs is what happens when Larry walks out to the barn. <laughs> That's funny, I don't care who you are, that's funny. Get it done. 
If there is an electronic singing fish in more than three rooms of your home, you might be a redneck. If you missed fifth grade graduation because you had jury duty, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think fast food is hitting a deer at 65 miles an hour, you might be a redneck. If somebody tells you you have something in your teeth and you take them out to see what it is, you might be a redneck. If you have a complete set of salad bowls and they all say Cool Whip on the side, you might be a redneck. If you wear a dress that is strapless with a bra that isn't, you might be... Think about that and try to sleep tonight, all right? If you've ever stared at a can of orange juice because it said concentrate, you might be a redneck. If you've ever had your nipple bitten off by a beaver, you might be a redneck. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.